Trump has been made fun of, I would say, and for good reason, for the way he speaks, his language, the words he repeats and uses over and over and over again. And I think for a long time, people saw that as somebody who was, you know, intellectually inferior or something along those lines. But I think people are starting to get the, I hope anyway, that people are starting to get the hint that by using certain phrases and words and the the way that he speaks, uh, it has a certain culting quality to it. If you could talk a bit about the way that Trump or any cult leader, but Trump maybe in particular, uses language as a part of this culting process. Uh, yes, uh, although it gets a little bit esoteric, but uh, I'd be, <laughs> you know, I'd be, I'd be pleased to do that. Uh, they, whether intentionally or not, and I, I'm a little reluctant to attribute a lot of intention to what Trump is doing, uh, just because I've seen lots of leaders of groups, uh, and while a few of them may be intensely aware of what they're doing, I think many of them do what they do because it works. And that's it. The, 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 the entire rationale for why they're doing what they're doing is because it works, because they've had the experience of, of people uh, doing what they want them to do, uh, that is to become true believers and loyal followers uh, as a result of whatever activity they're engaged in. And, and I have a tendency to think that Trump is probably in that camp, given his approach to research and self-reflection in other areas. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. right, right. <laughs> so, so, but, but now, that said, the thing that is working here is the ability of the leader to evoke a kind of primitive state primitive by primitive i mean ancient you know a, a kind of primitive state in us human beings uh, that is associated with uh, an earlier experience that we all have had and that is the experience of uh, existing in essentially an unconscious condition uh, while being spoken to by the gods and uh, here I'm uh, referencing Julian Jaynes uh, on his origin of consciousness in the breakdown of the bicameral mind, which I, I, I think is a quite brilliant uh, exploration of this. And you don't have to agree with the general details to buy his uh, essential hypothesis, which is that for many, for a couple hundred thousand years, we as human beings uh, have existed with language but without consciousness. And uh, he defines consciousness as being the ability to uh, see ourselves in context and to shift context, that uh, essentially to have agency, uh, as that term is used. And uh, he, he assumes that this is a relatively new phenomenon and brings a lot of evidence to bear for that that I won't go over now but you know he's he, he dates it back to about three thousand years ago. And whether it's whether it's three thousand or, or ten thousand doesn't really matter. What matters is that in our long species history, we have probably spent a lot of time in a condition of being uh, uh, directed by language that we attribute to the gods. And whether, that, and whether that god is a supernatural force or whether the god is a god king, you know, that is speaking, the god speaking through the mouth of kings. And you know, it's been very, very uh, recently in Western culture that we have given up the idea that that leaders are the embodiment of God in some way or another, you know, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the king and uh, uh, anointed by by God. Uh, and so uh, this this idea is with us, uh, and, and uh, the, the 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 feeling the, uh, that the, that we have that, that Jane's anyway suggests is that we have a, a what he calls a deep and hollowing yearning for servitude and for uh, surrendering or surrendering ourselves to the voice of authority a deep and hollowing uh, need. And uh, I think that a good cult leader is somebody who knows how to tap into that. Uh, 
It's it's somebody who knows how to evoke that feeling that all of us have about liking to circle around the fire and, you know, hear the crackling of the fire. And, you know, uh, why would that be a comforting thing for us? Well, uh, assumedly, because for a couple hundred thousand years, that's what we did. And it, it evokes this uh, traditional primitive uh, quality in us as human beings. And, I, and, I, and the cult leader, I think, similarly, is able to evoke the comfort of of surrendering ourselves to the voices of the gods and which is now a complicated and esoteric way of getting back to your question which is why why would you use particular language very simple repetitive language and that is because that's the language that's associated with this kind of auditory hallucination Uh, the the closest that we now understand uh, to this what Jane's thought was once a much more common phenomenon uh, are people who hear voices, uh, of course, famously associated with schizophrenia. But uh, in fact, there's research to indicate that there's probably a broader range of people who experience auditory hallucination than those people who present as schizophrenic. But in all cases, these voices are experienced as authoritarian directions. Uh, And this, of course, why... It, they're considered dangerous because, you know, it, if voices are telling you to go kill somebody, you know, uh, that that can be quite problematic. But uh, if you want if you want to take a look at the Old Testament, you'll find numerous examples in the Bible of the voice of God telling people to go kill people. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. The, that that's you know we heard the voice of God say, "Go out and smite them all." You know, and so I think that's what's happening here. I think that. Uh, you know, not to pick on Trump, but you know, people in general who were good at this are using language in a very simple but very um, um, evocative way uh, to generate this uh, suspension of consciousness, this this uh, surrender to uh, to an authority.